Hello everyone and welcome back to Scorpio Tech. In this video we're going to be unboxing and reviewing the Xiaomi Redmi Note 11 Pro 5G. Now admittedly I've been an iPhone user for the past 15 years so I thought this was going to be a shock to the system for me, however as you'll find out shortly I was surprised by how much I enjoyed using this phone as well as some of the incredible features it has to offer for the attractive price of just $329. The phone has now been released for over a month and I've been using it during that period to get a proper feel of what it would be like to use this phone on a daily basis. But before we get stuck into the review, the phone came really well packaged with a 67 watt plug for turbo charging, a USB Type A to USB Type C cable for charging and data transfer, as well as a SIM card removal tool, all of the usual paperwork and to my surprise an included clear case for the phone. As for the box, that's pretty much it, but the phone itself was packaged nicely with some of the key specs outlined on the front. They include the 108 megapixel pro grade main camera, the 67 watt turbo charging with a 5000 mAh battery, the incredible 120Hz AMOLED display and of course a Snapdragon 5G processor. This is the graphite grey colourway but there are also polar white and Atlantic blue options available. The camera definitely doesn't do justice for how nice the backing of this phone actually is. It's a smooth matte finish but when the light catches it just right there is a really nice reflection on the surface. Taking a look around the phone we of course have a nice peel for the screen, on the right side of the phone we have a power button which also doubles as a fingerprint ID and also a classic volume rocker above that. The left side of the phone is completely empty with the top of the phone housing a headphone jack and one of the two dual speakers, the SIM tray is located on the bottom of the phone alongside a USB charging port and the second of those dual speakers. As for the phone specs in a little more detail, the phone is running the Snapdragon 695 Octa-Core Max which is a 2.2GHz processor which for this price tag is pretty impressive. The base model also has 8GB of RAM with a memory extension of 3GB. These specs in combination with the 120Hz AMOLED screen made for an incredibly smooth and snappy experience which made my 60Hz iPhone 11 Pro Max start feeling quite dated. In terms of the build quality and general everyday performance I think you definitely get your money's worth with this phone. Browsing apps like Discord and Instagram on the Redmi Note 11 Pro 5G is as smooth as you'd like it to be with quick uploading times and a fluid display. Size wise the phone has a 6.67 inch display with an 86% screen to body ratio. The phone is also only 8.1mm wide making it slightly thicker than the 6S Plus as you can see here, but by no means does it feel clunky or awkward to use. The phone has a rear triple camera array with the main 108 megapixel camera using the Samsung HM2 sensor, an 8 megapixel ultra wide and a 2 megapixel macro lens as well. Now the 108 megapixel camera is honestly pretty good for images, however the macro and ultra wide lenses are straight up bad, with the quality dropping off massively as you zoom in to the point where it's an over sharpened and unrecognisable mess. But with that said, for standard shots and portraits the phone does a great job for this price point. As for video, again I'm slightly disappointed. The phone only has two options which are 720p and 1080p, both of which are capped at 30fps, with 4k and 60fps options nowhere to be seen. The absolute bare minimum I expect in 2022 is 1080p and 60fps. The 720p mode is honestly unusable and it's not even worth showing you. Again with that said, if you're not big into photography or videography and just want to take casual shots and clips for personal use then this will do the job just fine. Now let's take a quick look at screen quality, gaming performance and speaker performance as well. As I said earlier I think the screen looks great with a really nice balance between brightness, contrast and vibrancy, although many people have reported that the phone typically sits at 700 nits instead of the peak 1200 nits brightness. Playing games like PUBG and Fortnite I was getting 30 FPS which for mobile gaming is perfectly adequate but nothing mind blowing either. I think it's really important to keep coming back to the point that this phone is pretty much $1000 cheaper than Apple and Samsung Samsung's flagship phones which really helps drive home the point that this phone is incredible value for money even with some of its flaws. Now I'm just going to let you watch a small segment from one of my favourite TV series called Arcane to show you both the colour range and stereo speakers at work. Now I don't know about you, but honestly, for phone speakers I'm very impressed. Obviously it's lacking some depth and bass, but otherwise it is very watchable. Although the main highlight for me is the screen itself. Everything on the screen looks stunning from animated series to nature documentaries and much more, I am seriously impressed. But now let's test out the speakers with some music. I don't 
Again, it does sound good, but it's nothing mind-blowing, but all of this is from a $329 phone, which is just incredible. If you're on a budget looking for a modern phone and you're not fussed about videography, then this should definitely be on your contenders list. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below, and thank you all so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, feel free to hack away at that like button, and maybe even do a cheeky subscribe as well. Bye bye